Whenever you stream or download a podcast, you need to be sure that the podcast you choose is suitable for the audience at home. To help you, there are warnings and descriptions that tell you broadly what the podcast is like. This podcast has been classified as explicit, which means it is for adults only. It is bad parenting on your part if you allow your child to listen to this filth and then get out of your pram when they repeat what they have heard. An explicit podcast will certainly have an adult theme and, if the host webcams are switched on, may contain strong scenes of sex or violence, or a combination of both, that could be quite graphic. It will definitely contain spoilers and some explicit language, which will frequently mean sexual swear words, such as shit, fuck, bugger, bollocks, wank and twat. One of them may even say poo at one point. The warnings are there to give you the chance to make an informed choice. They allow you to have peace of mind and hopefully be entertained by these two idiots and their degenerate ways. And if this disclaimer isn't warning enough for what you're about to hear and you go ahead and listen just so you can get offended, then fuck it. We warned you and you only have yourself to blame. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the podcast. Hey, you good? I'm good. Can we uh, keep this as our secret? I wouldn't want to mess things up with Mara. You know, I think she's the one. So... Whatever. All right, then back to the RV. You coming? Yeah, my job's done. It's going to stay here in town. Tell Mara I say hi. the star. Welcome to Ancient Slumber Podcast, show number 29. My name is Chris Ward, and joining me for a chat is Myron Schmidt. How you doing, Myron? Good. How are you doing, Chris? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm looking forward to delving into the Wrong Turn series this afternoon. You think looking forward is the uh, right word you want to use? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, judging by that comment, I think I know where we're going to go. I think you'll be surprised at some of it. I might be, I might be, because I've, you've given me no inkling at all as to your feelings on any of these. So, uh, yeah, this could be interesting. I like it when we do that. <laughs> I try to do that on purpose. I know. No letterbox, no nothing. I mean, I'll, I may log the movies I watch, which I did, but yeah. That's brilliant. Yes, I like getting those reactions. So it's all completely unrehearsed and spontaneous, which is how we do things here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't, know. Couldn't write this crap, could you? <laughs> I, no, and who would want to? Let's be let's be honest. <laughs> oh, excellent. There's a podcast I listen to every once in a while. It's a true crime podcast, hmm. and uh, it's got two really good guys that run it, and you know they're very very professional. But I don't know how they do it. But the look behind the curtain is they edit on the fly. You know, so they'll sit down to record an episode. And then as they're recording, they'll stop and he'll edit and then they'll go on. Can okay. you imagine if we had to do that? Oh, my God, we'd be here for like 12 hours. That would take fucking days for us to do. I know. It takes me fucking days as it is on my own. <laughs> it 
it's yeah, I know it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh well, well, talking of other podcasts, I thought we ought to give our good buddies Tom and Chris a shout because they've launched a new podcast. They have, and what's it called, Myron? It is Lost in the Omniverse. It is, and they're talking about superhero movies and cinematic universes. Yes, yes, they are. First episode is out, started with Iron Man. I thought it was excellent. Mm -hmm. Great discussion of Iron Man. Very well done, very well done. Yeah, brilliant. So good luck to those guys on their new venture. They sound pretty pumped up and enthusiastic for it. Absolutely. They absolutely do. Brilliant. I do hope they go back and finish off the uh, Strange and Deadly list at some point, though. I hope so, too. I think they will. I mean, my God, trying to slog through that Section 3 list, holy jamoli. Yeah, it's one of those things, I've said it before, you you always start out on those lists and think, oh yeah, this would be a good idea, and then you get like two-thirds the way through, and you think, fuck it now. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But uh, no, yeah, so Lost in the Omniverse is out, so the Iron Man episode is there, and they've got a Patreon thing for extra content and all that if you want it, so yeah, go and listen to them. That's right. Fantastic. I'm actually, a, uh, Chris, you might be surprised, but I'm actually a Patreon supporter there. Are you now? Wow. I am. Well, I'm a tightwad, so I ain't. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> oh, I love those guys. No, they're good. They're great podcasters. So, uh, yeah, give them your support. Any new ones that you've been listening to speaking of podcasts? Um, no, I've actually had a bit of a call on my podcast recently because I had about like 30 different podcasts I'll subscribe to. And uh, like I've said, I, I haven't got the time to listen to them all anymore at work like I used to, so I've sort of scaled it down a bit. Ah, okay. Yeah, so some of you I've had to unsubscribe from you, sorry. Sorry. But uh, had you been better, then I wouldn't have had to, would I? But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of mean, isn't it? That is kind of mean, but that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just being silly, I'm just being silly. No, I had to scale it all down, so uh, yeah, some of you had to uh, fall by the wayside. But I may pick them up again at other points, you never know. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of podcasts that I absolutely love, mm. uh, but I don't have time to listen to, but I've heard them in the past, love them, and, but if they do a good movie, I, you know, I'll make sure to listen. Oh, that's it, yeah. A, a lot of the time, I, I unsubscribe because I just haven't got the time to sort of listen to everything, but I do sort of check in and see what episodes are down. If it's something I want to listen to, then uh, I, I cherry pick a bit. I had to, uh, a, a while ago, I had to upgrade my poor little phone. It just was dying. Nice. And so rather than go with the big fancy new one, I went with uh, the iPhone 7 that looks like an iPhone 5. <laughs> okay. But I got it at a like a obnoxiously low price, and I got like 128 gig on it. So I don't, you know. Uh, I, I keep my iPod and my phone separate. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's my, it's my personal one, so it's... Well, mine's a, work, mine's a work phone, but I can do podcasts on it, but then I'd find I'll just be constantly downloading stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it's... Uh, I, I carried two phones for the last, I don't know how many years, just oh, because, yeah. you know, how it's just, yeah, it's, you know, if I want to do personal stuff, I'll do personal stuff and on my phone. That's it, yeah. I, have you ever listened to, like, serial storytelling podcasts? Um, no, I did one time listen to one that sort of did, um, like, ghost stories and that sort of stuff every week, but uh, that was a while ago. No, I haven't listened to any sort of story ones for ages. I, I fell into a company called uh, Minnow Beats Whale, okay. and they have uh, three of them now. They have something called the Dark Tapes, Tannis, and uh, Rabbits. Oh, I've heard of the I've heard of the Dark Tapes. Yeah, I've yeah. listened to all of those. They're 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 short hits. They're thirty to forty minutes. Um, yeah, that's all you need, isn't it? Yeah, and excellent, very well produced, very well done. So, thank you guys over at Minnow Beats Whale. It's uh. They're definitely worth a listen. Ah, uh, excellent, yeah. Good stuff. Dark, Dark Tapes is more horror bend, Tannis, and Rabbits has got more of a sci-fi horror type bend to them. But yeah, I, I loved them. Thought they were great. Brilliant, excellent. Right, should we move on to anything that you've bought recently? Sure. What we've been buying, what we've been buying. I have uh, haven't bought too much. Um, I did pick up Alien Covenant, and uh -huh. to be honest, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's out here in about a month's time on Blu-ray. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but uh, I didn't like it. I I I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Okay. Nothing ever surpasses Alien, but no. Uh, and I, yeah. I will. I mean, I've got it pre-ordered for Blu-ray because I've I've got all the others, so I'm I'm going to get this one. So maybe I'll uh, I'll change my opinion on a second watch. Looking over, I think I have. Well, I know I have the Alien box set, 
and then I've got Prometheus and and uh, obviously Covenant, but I've also got the two Alien vs. Predator movies on Blu-ray, so I've got yeah. a completist, I guess. I say, oh, you got to get the set. You can't just have half and half, can you? No. 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 Also picked up, of course, the Blu-ray of Wrong Turn 1 through 5. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, we ain't got Blu-rays in this country. Really? No, nah, Wrong Turn 4 you can get on Blu-ray, but the rest, no, you have to buy imports. You, you know, All there is is a DVD box set. I don't own number six, but I uh, <clears throat> I found it. Oh, okay. You found it on your computer, did you? <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, right, magically. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know how that happens. No, I don't know. No, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some instructions as to how it happens. <laughs> well, you turn on your computer and magically your browser opens to... You know, <laughs> don't know what you mean. And then I got picked up the Blu-ray for uh, Phoenix Forgotten. What's that? I don't know that one. It's a... Uh, it's a found footage ah! <laughs> movie about the Phoenix Lights. <laughs> See, I thought you just said Phoenix Nights, which is a comedy show over here. Uh, uh, no lights. No. <laughs> Jerry, can you smell smoke? <laughs> That'll mean nothing to you. Yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd take a bollocksing for that one. Oh, well, you haven't mentioned found footage properly for a couple of shows, so we'll let you off. Uh, uh, none of my good, bad, and ugly are found footage. Fucking hell. I know. Bloody hell. Have we, have we broken you? No. All right. But I've been watching other stuff. Okay. You, well, you know that the, the, the podcast under the t- stairs, uh, Duncan's been doing this 1970s retrospective. So yes. I've been trying to catch as many movies of those as I can because a lot of them, like we talked, I haven't seen before. So it's been uh, interesting to see. Ah, yes. Least. You've been sending me pick the list of what you've been watching. Yeah. Cause yep. I've been yep. following him on the podcast, but I haven't been sort of looking in on the website to see what he's been watching. So, uh, oh, well, look forward to hearing about those. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I would assume a good part of those you've seen. Yeah, the ones you've shown me so far, I think I've normally seen about seven or eight out of ten of them. So. Yeah, which is pretty damn good. So No, uh, well, obviously a, a wasted life that I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, save me. You know what I just noticed? What? I've put my aliens in chronological order, sort of. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. I got Prometheus first, and then I've got the aliens, and then I've got Covenant. But I'm not sure if Covenant happens before the one, aliens. Oh, dear, yeah. I, yeah, I, did, I made that mistake with Star Wars once. Yeah, won't happen again. I fixed that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, what have I been buying? Uh, I am bought much, actually, because... Over the next sort of September, October, the Arrow Video have decided to go mental and release everything in the world. So, yeah, I'm trying to save a bit of money. But um, I did buy Don't Breathe. Ah, all right. On DVD, which I bought that in the supermarket for five quid the other day, which, with a download, uh, digital download copy as well. So uh, I might watch that tonight. I also bought... Oh, fuck me. What else did I buy? Night of the Demons remake. The remake? Yeah, the 2010 remake. All right. I actually, I used to have it on Blu-ray. Somebody gave it to me on Blu-ray, and I watched it once, and then I sold it. And then uh, I got talking to someone the other day. We were talking about Night of the Demons. It might have been Chris Clayton, actually. We were talking about Night of the Demons. I thought, oh, I haven't seen the remake for ages. And I thought, bugger, I sold it, didn't I? So I quickly went online and found a DVD copy for, like, 70p or something like that. Oh, that'll do. Right, right. Well, if I watched it again last night, yeah, it's all right, actually. I don't think it's that terrible. It's... uh. No, nothing, nothing compared to the original, but uh, it's all right for a bit of ghoulish fun. Certainly worth 70p, I think. <laughs> what little is, right? Well, exactly, exactly. And what else did I buy? I bought Kong Skull Island Blu-ray. I don't know if I mentioned that last show. Nope. Nope, I rewatched that, which, yep, I liked it a lot more second time. I liked it first time, liked it more second time. I bought it in a double pack with Godzilla, and ah. I watched I watched the Godzilla one. I watched Godzilla before I watched Kong again, yeah. I, I liked it more the second time than I did the first time. Yeah, I liked Godzilla more the second time. When I first watched Godzilla, I was like, oh, this is a bit crap, isn't it? <laughs> I, was on the, I was on the fence about it myself. Yeah, I saw it just it didn't felt like it went far enough with the monster action, you know. And then, uh, no, I watched it again. I thought, actually, no, it's pretty good. So uh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to see where they go with that universe, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. 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 Um, that's probably about it. I can't think of anything else that I bought. I know I bought a couple of bits from a charity shop, but I can't remember what they are now. So there you go. Yeah, I haven't bought much, to be honest. A bit disappointing, isn't it? I uh, try to stack up my buys on my desk until, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, we record and then I put them away. 
Yeah, if I get out everything that I bought, then people start asking questions about where they've come from and where I get the money for them. So I just hide them away. <laughs> <laughs> hide them away. Just just for me to know about. I think that's best. Just for me and the podcasting universe. <laughs> that's right. That's right. The other three people that listen to us. <laughs> that's right. Fucking <laughs> one-star reviews. <laughs> right. Love it. Bring them on. Right. That's funny. It is funny. Right. So, should we move on to good, bad and ugly? Yes. Let's do that then. Right then, give us something good that you've watched. Well, you know, I mentioned uh, a podcast under the stairs doing the 70s uh, retrospective deal. Yes. So, I got the chance to watch, uh, rewatch Deliverance. Ah, yes. Ah, okay. very, very, very good movie. It is. If you watch it, you gotta call it good. I mean, it's a awesome movie. It is. I have the, I think it's a 35th anniversary DVD on the wall behind me. Oh, nice. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good film. That it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just one. That's what this, I mean, there's, you know, there's not much to say about deliverance. I it's, suppose uh, it ties into what we're talking about today. The main subject. Yeah. Does yeah, in a way. It does. I, I would suggest though that. The acting and deliverance is probably better than some. I think the production values are slightly higher, yes. Yes. Although yes. John Borman did go on to make Exorcist 2, so it's not all good. <laughs> I, I would counter that maybe John had a drinking problem during Exorcist 2. Richard Burton certainly fucking did. I don't know. <laughs> Hypnosis machine. Forget about it. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. All right, uh, my good is The Lost Boys. Ah, both of us took a step back in time. No, oh, did you watch it as well? Uh, no, but I watched Deliverance. Oh, I see, yeah. No, uh, yeah, went on holiday, took a stack of DVDs with me, uh, Lost Boys was one of them, and me and the missus sort of talked our son into watching it with us, and, uh, cause he's got a big thing about, he, films that were are out before he was born, they're uncool, apart from Terminator 2, they're all uncool and crap and rubbish. So we said, right, <laughs> sit down, watch the Lost Boys, 30 years old, and, uh, he, I think he liked it apart from the saxophone player, <laughs> Tim Capella. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, Jesus. Because he did say, was that cool in the 80s? I said, well, not really, no. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it was never cool, dude. It was shit then. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> but no, I think he enjoyed it. It was shit then, it's shit now. You know? <laughs> it's just gotten worse. On the same note, actually, I've just remembered what I did buy in the charity shop. It was The Matrix on DVD. And, uh, yeah, we put that on for him as well. Because we said, I'll watch The Matrix. Oh, no, I'm watching that's from the 90s. It'd be rubbish. And we put it on, and he sat in silence the whole way through, and he loved it. Seriously? Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. It's The Matrix. It's The Matrix, yeah. He's, he sat and, what, he went, and then he went, yeah, that was pretty good, that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> so there you go. I may put the sequels on for him, because then it would soon change his bloody mind. The which one? The sequels. Uh, number two is good. Uh, I watched number two when it came out, and I hated it, and I sold it straight away. And I haven't even seen the third one. They are both in the local pound shop, though, so I might pick them up. I liked number two. It's got, it's got, you know, at least a top five car chase in it. I don't remember. It's been nearly fifteen years since I've seen it, but yeah. Okay, well, I'll pick it up from the pound shop. I'll rewatch it and let you know. Cool. Yeah, let me know. I've got the box set. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Right. Give us something bad. Oh, Lord, 1974, it's a movie called Deranged. Oh, if you put in this in bad, our podcast is over. What? How could it? Uh, are, the Ed Gein movie, right? Yeah, the one with Robert's Blossom in it. Oh, God. Oh, fuck off, that's brilliant. Brilliant what? It's a horrible movie. Yeah, but it's brilliant. How so? Because it's grimy and it's horrible and it's dirty and disgusting and it's everything that Ed Gein films should be. <laughs> oh, maybe it's one that I don't get like Grindhouse. Grindhouse I just don't get. <laughs> Wait, oh, but yeah. How did you watch it? Sorry, which was it a Blu-ray or a DVD? Or? No, I watched on my uh, iPad. Ah, I see, because Arrow put it out on DVD, uh, Blu-ray here. Oh, ah, okay. A couple okay. of years ago and the, the print is fantastic and there's some brilliant extras with it. Maybe that would uh help me like it better. I just didn't. I didn't get into it at all. It was it was very. Str God, it was weird. Oh, it's a great. Actually, I, I want to rewatch it now. I've got it on Blu-ray. Yeah, I love Deranged. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's just so scummy. 
I love <laughs> films about scummy things that are just scummy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Devil's Rejects. It's that whole same vibe about it. It's brilliant. Yes, yes, it is. Although I did find it creepy when uh, go back to your memory when he brought home the uh, barmaid. Yes, and she's waiting out in the car and finally goes in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finds him with a skin face on. It's weird. Well, you see where Rob Zombie got it from, though, can't you? Oh yes, 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 yes. You can. Oh, I can't believe you put that in bad. Oh, you are on my list of enemies. No, I'm not. I'll redeem myself. <laughs> you better. You're going to take some redeeming. <laughs> Then again, you haven't heard my bad yet. You might hate me for this. Oh, probably. <laughs> Go ahead. My bad is Stakeland 2. I have not seen it. I can't make a judgment. Okay, have you seen the first one? Yes. Then you've seen the second one. Oh, God, really? Yeah, and I didn't like the first one that much. I thought it was okay, but I thought it was massively overhyped. I didn't think it was like this new age of vampire films or that, like it was hyped at. Uh, and I watched the second one. It's on Netflix in the UK. Okay. I was flicking through and I just thought, oh, that's on there. Okay, well, let's have a look, see what it's like. Um, I think I turned to my phone about 10 minutes in and was just, it's not holding my interest at all. <laughs> it's just, it's Mad Max setting with vampires, the same old nonsense. It's, it's not bad as in it's shit. It's just bad as in it's not as great as people seem to rate it as. Ah. I, I think gotcha. I gave it two stars on Letterbox. <laughs> and, yeah. I, just, I don't get the, the love for both of these films. I don't get it. Gotcha. They're, gotcha. At best, they're mediocre to me. Interesting. Go on then, give us an ugly. Let's go to Donald Sutherland, 1973. Don't look now? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. yes. Okay. Now, I enjoyed the film, okay? It, it's not, not a bad film at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I just found it a little kind of bit disjointed, a little weirdly paced for me. And just kind of some weird script things going on. It was, uh, um, yeah. it's a weird movie and it just kind of, it was hard to hold my attention. But when I got it, then in the middle, it kind of went down and it just kind of, a uh, although good, it just kind of mashed together from some ugly bits, if that makes sense. Yeah. See, weirdly, I'm going to agree with you here because it's one of those films that whenever you talk about classic horror films of the seventies, this one gets mentioned a lot. I own it on DVD. I've watched it twice i think okay, okay. and yeah it, it's okay but i i can see what they're getting at but i think they go a stupid way of getting there or we'll say stupid way a nonsensical way of getting there yeah and yeah i know what you mean it, it's just when you think it's sort of getting somewhere there's some sort of surrealist twist in the script that sort of throws it somewhere else right right it's exactly slightly, it's otherworldly i think is a good way of putting it yes yeah but when it's on form yeah it's very good Good sex scene. Really? Apparently they did it for real. I thought it was an odd sex scene. That's probably why they did it for real. It's not movie okay. sex. That's true. Mm. It's not uh, Tom Cruise in Top Gun, is it? Or Jason Patrick in The Lost Boys? Uh, No. No. No, it's none of that. No. no. So I think that's probably why it feels weird. It is because it's probably natural. Although they say it wasn't. And some people say it was. <laughs> yeah, a bit but, of an influence uh, on Poltergeist, I would say. Really? Not the sex scene. The uh, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> the little girl in the in the red uh, coat uh, thing. Ah, yeah, yeah. I some can of, certainly see that. Some of the, especially sort of Poltergeist three and things like that. I think there's a bit of that in there. Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. it is one of those films. It's you can see it in other films, and I think, but yeah, it's it's never really struck me as uh, a stone cold classic. I don't put it up there with The Exorcist or Amityville or anything like that. You know. Right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see why you put that in there. Um, my ugly was a film called Knuckle Bones. Knuckle Bones. Have you seen this? No. No. I bought this from the supermarket the other day with Don't Breathe. It's the best way to describe it is a supernatural slasher. Okay. Yeah, it's teenagers summon a demon who is a sort of cross between Pumpkinhead and Jason Voorhees, and he goes on the killing rampage and kills everyone who summoned him type thing okay it's extremely low budget when it first started a couple of people online said oh no it's really good it's really good and i put it on and the style of filming it was very low budget very digital camera ish and i just thought oh god it's going to be one of these asylum type features fuck's sake okay but i stuck with it and i actually enjoyed it it's really good it's totally cheesy totally naff it looks horrible 
but there's something there. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's the character of Knucklebones himself, I think, is the demon who comes back, because he looks like, if you imagine Jason Voorhees without the mask, mixed with sort of Iron Maiden's Eddie on the cover, you know. <laughs> and he comes out with these puns. He's got this demonic voice. He's got these Freddy Krueger-style puns. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. That almost sounds... That almost sounds humorous. Yeah, and I'd say if if you can find it really cheap, pick it up because you'll watch it and you'll enjoy it. But yeah, it. I think if if they do decide to do sequels, if they up the budget a bit, they could have something really really good if they do it properly. Right, right. But um, yeah, it's one of them. It looks horrible. The acting's horrible. The script is horrible. But it's got tits and ass in it. There's loads of good deaths, and the character of Knucklebones is great. So yeah, I'm putting it in ugly, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> so all right chris sorry uh i i gotta i gotta interject this so my grandson he's seven yes so he is learning how to text <laughs> right and he said hi grandpa and i was just texting him i asked him what are you doing and he says pooping but don't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone except everyone who listens to this podcast <laughs> You gotta love kids. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's my grandson. They tell it how it is, don't they? That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, God. That's a, that's a great transition, isn't it? <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> should we move into our main feature? Oh, God, on that note, I have to ask, have you seen a movie called Q-so, K-U-S-O. No, but I have heard about it. I think it, I think it's on Netflix. Or yes. Sh- or Shudder, one of them. Shudder. It's on Shudder. Yes. yes. And the guys at, at uh, Stream Punk reviewed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got it on my iPod. I haven't listened to it yet. Uh, let's just say that they found more in that movie than I I ever did. Oh, oh yeah. Well, ben God. and Dan will. They will bring out the things you never thought you could see. Yes. Yeah. Is yeah. it good? All right. Yeah. I should add that to my list, I think. It's a, uh, well, it's an adventure in scatological viewing. Oh, I get you, yes. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Excellent, brilliant. Right, let's move on then, main feature. Main feature. Wrong turn, let's play a trailer. Are you all right? I'm so sorry. Yeah. I just found this tied to a tree back there. Somebody did this. Baby, seriously, this isn't funny. Wrong Turn, 2003, directed by Rob Schmidt. Any relation? No. Oh, okay. Starring 
Desmond Harrington, Eliza Dushku, Jeremy Sisto, Kevin Zegers, Lindy Booth, Julian Richins and Ted Clark. And Wayne Robson, I'm going to say him as well. All right, six people find themselves trapped in the woods of West Virginia, hunted down by cannibalistic mountain men grossly disfigured through generations of inbreeding. Ooh, that's good. This is right up your alley. It's right up my passage indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know where you pulled that movie from. Out my passage. Woo-hoo. Exactly. Yeah, had you seen, you, you hadn't seen this one, had you? Uh, or had you? No, no, no. Okay. I did find I did find one in the series that I've seen. Okay, but not this one. Not this one. Right. Okay. So I saw this on DVD probably about two thousand and nine. I think I didn't know about it when it came out because yeah, it came out in a period where I wasn't buying many DVDs or anything like that. So didn't hear about it. I actually heard about it reading somebody else's review, and I thought that looks quite good so i found a copy on dvd dirt cheap bought it watched it and formed an opinion which i'll tell you in a minute so what did you think i actually enjoyed it you enjoyed it good i i did it was uh it was you know i remember when the movie came out and i lived in west virginia at the time Mm. and you know people joked about you know the best of west virginia being portrayed (laughs) especially well it's worth mentioning this was filmed in canada Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> but the Canadian wilderness, in all fairness, looks an awful lot like West Virginia. Yeah, I think so, to, anyone, to anyone outside of the U.S., we would probably watch it and go, that looks like Virginia. Yeah, West Virginia. Yeah. Sorry, is it, do you have to differentiate? Yes, you do. Okay. People in either state tend to get... Uh, all right, you have, you, know. the, you have to Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we have areas like that, yeah. You know it is. Uh, but I, I, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought... the. Uh, you know, the, the kills were good. Uh, you know, the story was fun and, you know, and. Uh, well, it's a story that you can't really do a lot with because it's been done so many times before. True. I mean, it that's in a good way. It draws on, obviously, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Hills Have Eyes and parts of Deliverance. You yes. Basically, basically mash them together. You've got wrong turn. There's nothing original yes. here at all. No, no, there's not. But it's a case of it's not the material, it's what you do with it. Exactly. Exactly. It and obviously you've got your favourite actor in the world in this. I, hey, I like Jeremy Sisto. <laughs> Be fair, I think Jeremy Sisto is the best character in this. I liked him. Yes, I do too. Yeah. I didn't want to say that because I figured you'd make fun of me. Oh, well, I will anyway. But Okay, fair point. <laughs> Now, a lot of these films, you tend to get actors and characters that you just don't really give a shit about. And, you know, obviously, by the time we get to the last installment, that will be the case. But yeah. <laughs> well, we may not even make it that far before we start losing interest. But, yeah, I think that's the one thing this one definitely does right. You've got uh, Jeremy Sisto in there, who I think is probably the best character in the film. He feels the most natural character. Yes. Out of all of them. Uh, you've got Desmond Harrington, who plays Chris Flynn, who drives a 67 Mustang, which is a complete thing of beauty. Oh, dear. I'd love a Mustang. Doesn't last long, though, does it? No, no. It's it's out in them woods somewhere. It's probably still there, rusting away. That's right. That's right. But, yeah, he basically, he's late for a meeting. He takes the back roads through West Virginia. He crashes into a uh, an RV carrying the other characters. And so they have to go for help, and they come full foul of the cannibals, and that's basically your story. <laughs> yep. That's basically it. Um, so Eliza Dushku, as the sort of the quote-unquote final girl, what do you think? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, this is my sort of slight problem with this. This came out the same year as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake, uh, and obviously you had, um, oh, what's her name, as the final girl in that? What's her name? I can't remember now. No, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm horrible. I, I could probably sit next, as much as I admire Jeremy Sisto, Sis, Sisto, I could probably sit next to him at Denny's eating lunch. I'd never know he was there. <laughs> Jessica Biel, that's the person. Yeah, you got Jessica Biel in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake who ends up running around from Leatherface wearing a tight white vest. And you basically have Eliza Dushku doing the same thing here. And not as well, I think. I don't know. There's something about her and Desmond Harrington... They end up being the heroes of the thing, but I just don't feel that they're also charismatic enough. They seem quite bland. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have seen Jeremy Sisto at the end of the film, but I guess he wasn't playing that character, was he? 
it, it's, uh, you know, I think Desmond has an okay screen presence, but. Yeah, it's not his presence. It's just that I don't know whether it's his acting or the script or he was just trying to be mean and moody and just coming across as a bit dull. I don't know. He He's better when he doesn't play that mean and moody part of it. When he's just being natural, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But, uh, but, you know, I actually enjoyed it. I, I, I would absolutely rewatch it again. Yeah, I have rewatched it about four or five times since I first saw Very it. Cool. Yeah. It was actually it was actually on telly over here not so long ago, so uh, I sat and watched it then as well. Oh, nice! Oh, nice! The other problem I've got with this film, and this applies to all of them, but I think especially in these earlier ones, is the actual cannibals themselves don't seem to be clearly defined in their look. Do you know what I mean? Oh God! Let's not even talk about their look, because at the end it's just at, at least here they made an effort. Yeah, but I think. They look. I think Stan Winston did the effects on this. I think so too. I would be right in saying, yeah, they just seem to be interchangeable. There's no sort. Of, there's no leather one leather face character in amongst the rest of them. Do you know what I mean? And I think Three Finger is supposed to be the main one. He's the one with the I, great I was, gray hair. I was going to say he's not very interchangeable with the ones in the first one. No, he's the one you can separate from the other two. But when you yep. look at him, his face just looks like a, a mask that somebody's melted slightly. Yes. Yeah. And it gets, by the time we get to number six, I don't even think they tried to melt the mask. I think they just went down to the corner. Yeah, it's straight from know. the store, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Somewhere along the line, it was a misshapen, um, William Shatner mask. <laughs> so they, you know, they went into the 24 hour William Shatner mask, went to the, you know, what would you say, 50p bin and pulled the mask out? The bargain bin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what sort of lets this one down a bit is it's a little bit, they could be anybody. And the, so apart from Three Finger, the, the, the what's the I was going to say baddies, they're not baddies, I'm not, I'm not five. Um, the cannibals don't seem to be that <laughs> clearly defined. Oh, yeah, no, no, they're really not. But that said, like you said, the kills are really good, especially some uh, people getting shot with arrows and people getting cheese wired and cut in half and all sorts of things going on. Um, yep, yep. Th- there's a lot of CGI in this film. It's not that bad. You can spot it, especially when they're up in the treehouse and you've got the CGI background of looking across the, the forests of West Virginia. That looks a little <laughs> bit from a video game. But, um, but yeah, I think there, there are certainly worse films that have got CGI kills and things in it that do it a lot worse than this does. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, che- it's a cheap film. It's not very original, but it is fun. It is entertaining. Absolutely, it is. There's Absolutely. not a lot else you can say about it, really. You know, if you put it on a bill with any of the Texas Chainsaw films or any of the Hills Have Eyes films, you know, you'd have a damn good time if yes. inbred cannibals are your thing, which they are. Yeah. <laughs> a, a little historical note. Hmm? I have been to Greenbrier County. Oh, it's a real place, is it? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's where the it's where the Greenbrier Hotel is located. OK. And up until, you know, the last 15, 20 years. Um, it it was a uh, it was the bomb shelter for the president and Congress in the event of a nuclear war. Ah, interesting. They built it alongside it, underneath the Greenbrier, and now it's a it's a museum. You can tour it. Um, it's no longer in use, but uh, that's been you know fairly recent. Oh right, okay. Uh, ah. the, the green the Greenbrier is a um, it's a five star hotel. <laughs> but it's it's a very 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 odd place. Um, it's like one of those hotels where they they stopped decorating and started preserving in about 1940. <laughs> okay. I mean, because it is, um, yeah, maybe even earlier than 1940, but it is uh, oddly. It's just like it's a you go back and take a, a step back in time. It's like a time capsule. Yeah, which I assume is part of the draw, but it's it's actually very famous in West Virginia. Loads and loads and loads of people go every year. So ah, fantastic! But mm-hmm. I, I I have been once, so it's uh it was a work function. I don't think I could have afforded it otherwise. It's really really expensive. Hmm. But uh, it was uh you know it was uh, interesting. Well, there you go, a little claim to fame there then. There you go. So yeah, but no, Greenbrier County is a is a real place. Wow. Okay. And as you get further in the movies... And move further away from Ontario. 
<laughs> the the Greenbrier Hotel itself is located in I think the address is like White Sulphur Springs, okay. West Virginia, because they have Sulphur Springs all over the place. So they have a, a fountain where you can go, you know, a tap where you can get uh, sulfonated water and drink. I don't know why you would, but well, you can. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the films does go there with springs later on. Yes, it does. It does. I think there. Wait a minute. I think there's two films that have springs. Um, quite possibly, quite possibly. Because uh, one of them spends an enormous amount of time showing a woman with huge accoutrement. You mean tits? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, they spend a lot of time on those on her naked butt. And quite right, too. Uh, absolutely. I believe it's uh, number five. Uh, yes. Or is it number six? They get into a spring. They do. And so did I whilst watching it. Well, you know. My hand certainly got into a springing motion. <laughs> Ooh, right. Yeah, that's right. So based on all that then, what are you scoring wrong turn? I scored it to three. A three? Yeah. Wow. I went a little bit more. I went a three and a half. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, I think it's solidly entertaining. It's, it's not going to change anybody's world, but uh, yeah, it's a decent little horror film, I think. Yeah, no, I, I do too. You, yeah. It's... You know, and I think the the best thing about it is it doesn't take itself seriously. No, no, that's right. It knows what it is. Yep. And I think I think the presence of Jeremy Sisto helps in that. Yes. He adds the humour to it. Yes. <laughs> yes. He certainly does. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. So let's move on to the next one then, shall we? Let's do that. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, eight strangers. Are about to realize we shouldn't be here. They're not alone. Now, the hunt is more terrifying Jump. than ever before. Wrong turn to dead end, unrated. Right, Wrong Turn 2, Dead End, 2007, directed by Joe Lynch, starring Eric Eliasson, Henry Rollins, Texas Battle. You'd call him Alamo for short, wouldn't you? Steve <laughs> Braun. That to his face, I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ken Kersinger and Wayne Robson. All right. A group of reality show contestants find themselves fighting for their survival against a family of hideously deformed inbred cannibals who plan to ruthlessly butcher them all. That sounds good to me. So what did you think? I'm dying to hear your thoughts. You loved it. Loved it. Brilliant. I'm glad you loved it. I I mean, how how can it not get any better with Henry Rollins? Yeah. (laughs) He was absolutely brilliant in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) You calling me a pig fucker, son? <laughs> oh God! And I mean, and there's more to it than than uh, uh, you know, just Henry Rollins. But uh, yeah, y- you know, it, it's just it's an awesome, you know, it's an awesome idea of uh, of a reality show. Uh, yeah, well, it was. <laughs> it all came out in the midst of the reality TV show boom. You got Henry Rollins playing an ex military colonel who now hosts this survival show shot out in the woods so obviously he's he's got a load of young people with him who are uh of various characters and uh who's going to survive till the end but they don't count on running into three finger and his clan who yeah, is no, got, they don't in true texas chainsaw style he's got a different clan this time he's got brothers and sisters and a mum and dad now <laughs> oh god i know Ah, oh, dear. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. The continuity through these films isn't great, although it is probably a bit more cohesive than Texas Chainsaw ever got. Well, except between three and four, is it four and five where they actually kill Three Finger? He dies at the end of three, but he's okay. back in four, five, and six because they start yep. the timeline again. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. So, yeah, this one is directed by Joe Lynch, who is a cohort of Adam Green, so that sort of shows you the level of gore and humour that we're going to be at. Yeah, this very much fits into the sort of hatchet style of slasher filmmaking. It's gore and sex and violence just all over the place. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's brilliant. I fucking love this film. Yes. 
If anybody says to me anything about, you know, horror sequels, name a horror sequel better than the original Wrong Turn 2. Straight away. Yep. Yep. It's my go-to answer. I love the opening sequence of this, where you've got Kimberly Coldwell going to uh, what she thinks is the casting call for this TV show. And she ends up getting cut in half by Three Finger, straight up the middle, and there's two rubber <laughs> legs fall to the floor. <laughs> I know. Which I didn't actually, I never actually noticed the uh, the effect until um, Blue pointed it out in our feedback, and I went back and watched it and said, so you can actually see the rubber leg bend as it falls over. Oh, yeah, you can. Absolutely, yeah. you can. Yeah. It's awesome. But she also, did she also not have a Mustang? I guess she did. It was a newer one, though. Yep. Yeah, so I don't know whether Ford actually offered any sponsorship for this. I doubt it. But uh, I doubt it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is such a fun film. It's sh- some of it. I suppose you could call slightly found footage because they are filming with like head cameras and things. Yeah, yeah. So there are shots of that in the interspersed with the other stuff. Yeah, the characters themselves are pretty annoying, but they're all fairly well defined. You've got Erica Learson in there, who's from Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake who's quite a nice presence in these films, I think. you got Henry Rollins, who's just fucking fantastic. Yep. Who doesn't want to see Henry Rollins going after rednecks with a shotgun? Brilliant. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I still say he should be the Punisher. Why isn't he the Punisher? He should be. He should be the Punisher. Why can't people see this? Ugh. You know what? I could get on board with that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I saw Henry Rollins' name come up. And I went, oh, this is why Chris really likes this. I get this. Did you not know Henry Rollins was in it then? No, not at ah, all. All right, okay. Yeah. And I went, ah, this is why Chris likes it. Absolutely. And yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you got the inventive kills in this one again. You got all sorts of uh, stabbing influence and blades and God knows what going off on people. It's just a fun, good time. There's not a lot else you can say. You've just got to sit and watch it and soak it all yeah. in because it is so much fun. The only drawback to this one, I think, as well as the, I said before, the mutant's not looking particularly great. You do get the mutant baby being born and it is a little, oh. bit, it's a little bit of a shit effect. Yeah. They linger on it a bit too long. Yeah. Uh, literally, it's a little bit of a shit effect. Yeah. It's not like the Dawn of the Dead remake where they just sort of flashed it on camera, then flashed it off again. And yeah, yeah, yeah they actually spend too long on it, but. There you go. Tonally, it fits with the rest of the film because this is just off the wall extremity in every sense. But it's so much fun. And yeah, there's not else I can say about it. I just absolutely fucking love it. So I want to know what you scored it. The, I will say this. The only disappointment I had was Henry Rollins didn't make it. No. Spoiler. Henry Rollins does die, but he does die in a fairly heroic way. Y- yes. Yes. Well, yeah, he ain't absolutely. going out on his own. No, no, no. So uh, and the, the ending is. Uh, Compared to a lot of them, the ending is uh, you get a lot more um, sense of fulfillment at the end from this one than a lot of yes. them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's great death in this scene. This one. This one does have a wood chipper and it is used to great effect. Oh, you mean at the very end? Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Absolutely. So uh, yeah, I think the the effects are better in this one as well. I think the CGI is better. Some of the practicals are a bit rubbery, as I've said, but the I think the CGI is better in this one. You know, they, it, hey, you got to give them props for that. They didn't blow their budget on the first kill. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. So maybe it's a little daft, as you would say, but it's still, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. still not bad. It's, I like the death of the girl getting the axe in the head as she's running through the forest. Yes. She's got a camera on her that's facing her as she's running, and you just see her running, and you just see the axe come out of nowhere, come flying, and stick her straight in the side of the head, which I think is a really good effect. <laughs> I, I think um, this one has the better effects, but I think some of the kills, my favorite kill, I believe, is in the third one. Yeah, I think the kills are maybe a little bit more basic in this one, but they're yep. still good. Yeah. Yeah. I think the production value is a little bit higher, which is you know saying a lot for wrong turn movies. Yeah. yeah. Right, and what did you score it? I scored it a four. Did you now? I did. Wow, that's pleasing. Four and a half for me. Love this film. It's only the, the, the mutant baby effect that really sort of, that's the bit where I go, oh, nah, I don't need to see that. Yeah, this one is one, it doesn't take itself seriously. Henry Rollins is over the top, uh, but in a good way, it's just completely bonkers. It is. And if you, if you get the uh, DVD or the Blu-ray in, in the US, 
there will be a special feature with a making of an interview with Joe Lynch. And he says he just went all out on this one just to chuck everything in there and see what happens. <laughs> That's Joe Lynch. I love it. And happily, it all turned out fine because it's brilliant. That's right. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad you liked it. What, what do you think would make a good double feature with this? Oh, good question. Um, oh, something flashed into my, I think something like Hatchet 2. Didn't Joe Lynch direct that or write it? No, Adam Green. Part of it? He may have been involved in it, but yeah, I think Hatchet 2, because that goes completely over the top as well. I'm going to go with a, a spiritual pairing, and I'm going to go with um, Camp Dread. Really? Yep. Okay. I haven't watched that in a while. Um, I don't remember it being as extreme as this one. No, no, it's not. But it's the same kind of, uh, you know. And the concept's the same. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's the one with Eric Roberts, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Eric Roberts. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. From Fair the enough. guy who I can't think of his name right now who did Death House. Yes. And the Fields. Um, Harrison. Oh, I did review yeah. it when it came out. That was a couple yeah. of years ago. But yeah. yeah. Another one you Again, it, it's a, it's a bonkers movie. It, you know, hmm. doesn't take itself all that seriously. And it's a reality, uh, with a slasher. That's yeah. not a hillbilly. So. Yep, good shout. Right then. Well, should we move on? Yes, let's move on. Let's move on, and things are going to take a slightly different turn now. Yes. Not a wrong turn, but a different turn. Do you see? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, let's play the trailer. It's a mutant! It kills defeat! Just because you can't see them <laughs> doesn't mean... They're not there. This October, the traps are set. He's not going to stop until we're all dead. It eats people. We're its food. Long turn three, left for dead. Right, Wrong Turn 3, Left 4 Dead, 2009, directed by Declan O'Brien, starring Janet Montgomery, Tom Frederick, Jake Curran, Tom McKay, Jack Gordon, and lots of other people we've never heard of and never will again. Right. (laughs) When their transfer bus crashes into a West Virginia forest, well, I'll take issue with that being a West Virginia forest, a group of convicts oh. and a corrections officer meet a rafter who is on the run from cannibalistic hillbillies who have murdered her friends. Yes. This is where the series takes a dive. Would you agree? I. Well, it's going to de- define dive. Because right, right out of the bag, I, I found this one somewhat enjoyable. Right. I think the opening scene is enjoyable. When you've got yes. a rather large-breasted girl in a bikini... <laughs> Who gets an arrow straight through the areola. <laughs> or the titty. And yeah. <laughs> the, the, this was the one where they were in the spring, right? It was the two bikers, or is that the next? No, 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 no. That's not this one. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is where the forest is clearly not, well, it clearly wasn't West Virginia before, but we're not even on the Northern American mainland now. <laughs> We're over in um, Europe somewhere, Eastern <laughs> Europe, Germany, that area, Bulgaria. <laughs> yeah, we're, we've gone into sort of Pumpkinhead Hellraiser sequel territory now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. over in Bulgaria. We've got no known actors, lots of people with ski at the end of their name in the crew. And <laughs> lots of... <laughs> where is that? That might have been horribly racist. It's not racist, but it's just, I'm just making the point that what we had before, North American productions with some big studio backing behind them, we've now gone over to Bulgaria with nobody of any note behind the scenes, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You can have ski in your name, I don't mind. (laughs) Yeah, same as they did with Pumpkinhead 3 and 4 and Hellraiser 7 or whatever, we're uh, not in in Kansas anymore, as they say. Right. But I would, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I would stack it up against as a better product than some of those uh, sequels you mentioned. Uh, would you? Okay. Yes. Yes, I would. All right. We might disagree here then. In the series, 
Okay, we're talking about a narrow universe uh, of in the series. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, I think the plot of this one I quite like. I like the idea of the prisoners in the bus crashing in the woods, and they've got to hunt for the money that they've lost whilst the hillbillies are after them. I like that idea. Yep. I just don't think it's done very well. I think the acting is amateurish at best. Uh, the script isn't great. It feels very doesn't feel natural. It does too many pauses between lines. It just feels a bit static. And the effects aren't very good. But this is the one where they start using razor wire instead of barbed wire. Yes, yes, yes. It's probably cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> At least where they're at. Yeah. It, my favorite kill of the whole series is in this one, where one of the prisoners gets caught up in that uh, razor wire net. Oh, and yes. The guy drives off with the uh, pickup. That's right, yes. Yeah, yeah, it gets wrapped up in the wire and he picks it up. I and it absolutely loved it. I, I paused it and rewatched it uh, three times. Yeah, that is quite a good kill. We'll give you that. Um, I think most of the budget went on that kill, to be honest. Uh, probably. Probably. You know, it's funny. Even in spite of all that, I still found it overall enjoyable watch. Did you? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. I'm not going to say it's not enjoyable, but I'm going to say if you've so far watched the first two... And then you come to this one, prepared to be disappointed. Yes, there is a there is a dip in quality. Yeah, and it it feels very much like you can tell the forest is in Eastern Europe and it's not in America. I don't know how you can tell these things, but you just can when you look at them, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like uh, it's like watching somebody in America trying to direct uh, a show that takes place in London. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you you know. can tell. Yeah. Conjuring two. <laughs> yeah, there's almost at least a thousand double decker buses, you know. Yeah. And, you know, things like that. Yeah. I think it also has the plot has the feel of something like an early 90s action movie. Oh, do you know what I mean? I could imagine someone. Yeah. yeah. I could imagine like Jean Claude Van Damme or something making a film like this in the early 90s. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's got that sort of feel to it, which isn't a bad thing. Obviously, I like all that. But. Well, he sort of did. He made one that was set in the bayous of Louisiana, right? Hard oh, target. Yeah, yeah, where he ripped a snake in half and all sorts of crazy shit. That's it. Yeah, I think if, <laughs> if they'd gone that route and made it a bit more actiony, it it might be a bit better. But it just feels like there's no energy to it to me. Let, let me let me tell you why I liked it. Go on. Then. Um, aside from the kills and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, so in the first one, it's a it's a straightforward cannibal one. Yeah. The second one, it's a reality show invaded by cannibals. Yeah. The third one is, you know, prisoners trying to run from cannibals. We almost have three distinct movies. Hmm. We certainly can't say that for the remaining three. No. In the series. No. And I think that's what appealed to me is, that, you know, a lot of sequels just try and, you know, remake the same movie over again. Yeah. But uh, this one, at least, there was an attempt through the first three to kind of, dis- you know, differentiate make them. them. Dis- yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Like I, said, I think that comes down to the plot more than anything else. Yes, yes. It's but, worth noting you know, that... Go, on. go ahead. I was going to say, it's worth noting that Declan O'Brien, the director, is responsible for the next three films, Wrong Turn 3, 4, and 5. I know. I know he is. <laughs> this is his trilogy, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, oh. and it's a bit like what happened with the middle Hellraiser films when they got the one director to write and direct, you know, three films in a row or whatever it was. And yeah, yeah, I don't know. I suppose it's it is entertaining on a certain level. It's, it's yeah, I don't know. It's if I was going to do a marathon of them again, this is, I would probably avoid this one. Oh, I'd include it. Really? Okay. I would. I would. And it's also worth saying that Three Finger, the main cannibal, dies at the end of this one. Yes, yes, he does. He does. You could say this is the end of the first trilogy. We needed, uh, we did need John, John Claude Van Damme for the fight scene, though. Yes, we did, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that, that fight scene was a little abysmal. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you that. I will absolutely give you that. And, you know, Three Fingers mask prosthetics are, are taking a sharp nose dive here. Yeah, you can see the lines around the eyes now where uh, the oh, mask has been oh, stuck on him. Oh, yeah. God, yes. Makeup, we don't have time for no makeup, yeah. <laughs> Even on the DVD you can see it, so I don't know what the Blu-ray is going to be like. <laughs> it's just worse, it brings it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could just see a progressive in the care to detail for the uh, cannibal makeup, just, you know. Yeah. 
just shit the bed. I think with better actors and maybe a bit more of energetic direction, it may it would have been a lot better. But to me, this feels like the TV movie version of the first film. Yes, yes. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But have, having said that, I gave it a 2.5. I gave it a 2. Okay, I can understand that. I really want to like it and say it's it's not terrible, but it's just really not as good as what went before. Right, right. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next one. We have 182 patients. Most are horribly deformed due to inbreeding and birth defects. I know what you're thinking. But we have to do this for their own good. It's not a prison. We're going to rehabilitate the patients, if at all possible, and have them rejoin the general population. Just kids. The most dangerous? Definitely the most dangerous patients in the hospital. They have an advanced form of congenital analgesia. They can't feel pain. That's some fucked up shit. The fuck is that? Take a look, I will. No, nobody here. Ah! That's it! Ah! Ah! You fucking asshole! Turn four, Bloody Beginnings from 2011. Yeah. Directed by Declan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Dean Armstrong, Tenika Davis, Jennifer Pudovic, Tara Vanessa, Ali Tatarin, Samantha Kendrick, and more people I don't know and never will. Right. <sighs> a group of college students gets lost in a storm during their snowmobiling trip and takes shelter in an abandoned sanitarium, which, unbeknown to them, is home to three deformed cannibals. Ooh. Yep. Right. This is an odd one. This is the one where I don't know where you're going to go with this. <laughs> so we know that Three Finger, the main cannibal, died at the end of the last film. Yep. So why is he back here? Well, this is a prequel. Yes, yes. This is a prequel. We see the young cannibals, not the fine young cannibals, the pop group, but the young cannibals in the sanitarium. Yep. In an opening scene where they're being examined by a doctor who thinks that we should be nicer to these mutants. Naturally, they escape and trash the place, kill everybody. And then we skip forward to what is 2003. And we have our group of horny teenagers who seem to be shagging each other several <laughs> times over. <laughs> in what has got to be the best sex scenes of the series so far. <laughs> There's all sorts of, of course, there's girl on girl, there's boy on girl, there's all sorts of things going on here. At the same time in the same room. Same time in the same room, which is very satisfying. And, <laughs> and, and one of these so-called quote-unquote teenagers is actually nearly 40 years old. Did you know that? <laughs> I know! <laughs> <laughs> I looked up his IMDb profile and he's got grey hair and I'm fucking oh, hell. Oh, jeez, I know. That's yeah. just funny. All right. So yeah, they go on a snowmobiling trip, so and they end up at this sanitarium. Of course, they think it's all empty, and then Three Finger and his brothers appear. Right? What did you think? It was a snooze fest for me. Really? Yes, I was completely uninterested. I spent a lot of time uh, playing euchre on my phone, and yeah. Okay. 
I just couldn't get into this one at all. Right. Is that the story, the acting, the effects? What what was what put you up? Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. All of it. I, I just want didn't do anything for me. Right. Uh it, it just this was to me this was uh where it kinda went to shit fast. Okay. Uh I'm gonna disagree with you. Really? As is normal. Yes, good. <laughs> I see what you're saying. And yes, I think it does strike as desperation on part of the producers that they killed their main villain at the end of the last one. And now they're thinking, oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> let's go back to the beginning. The story isn't strong no. at all. It started out OK. Yes, it really did. I, I, I thought, well, OK, I don't know what Chris is talking about. This has got the possibility to be a, you know, fairly cohesive and somewhat strong series. And then I started watching after the opening scene. <laughs> Yeah, the opening scene's good. The story's not strong. The acting is bad. Um, the characters aren't particularly distinguishable from each other. But I think this is, looks better than the third one. I think the production's a bit higher. Production values are higher. Really? Yeah, I think the okay. special effects are better. It didn't strike me quite as TV movie when it started, like the third one did. I, it's. Um, it feels more like a film. Y- you know, what's funny is rather than just having a group of horny people enjoying snowmobiling. They had to go through this big deal about, oh, God, we don't have any money for this fancy trip, so we're stuck snowmobiling. Yeah. Like, you know, right, right there, I'm like, you guys are a bunch of douchebags, and I yeah. didn't care. You know, I, I, you know, yeah, I didn't I th- care. I think that the snowmobiling is just a plot device to get them to the sanitarium, and then the snowstorm can move in. Yeah. Do you get a lot of snow in West Virginia? Um, yes. You do? You Especially if you're in the mountains, it gets worse. Mm. Um, I, I've never, that I remember, encountering a blinding blizzard like that in West Virginia. No. But certainly roads are unpassable when it snows just because it's so mountainous. But it's not like living in Chicago or Colorado where you can get these driving, blinding blizzards that you can't see anything. I, I've never heard of that in West Virginia. Okay. Well, to be fair, we're not in Bulgaria anymore. We're back in Canada. For this it, well, that would make sense. I was going to guess the Swiss Alps, but you know. Yeah, it does have that sort of feel to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, with, with that with that snowstorm and you know. But no, we're back in Canada, so I think I think that helps that it doesn't feel like it's you know been shoved off to Eastern Europe. <laughs> Low budget. Nobody's going to watch this crap anyway. Which is, what, which is what the third one feels like. So yeah, I just think it, it looks it feels looks and feels more like a proper film. Okay, okay. I like a couple of the kills in it. There's the one in the uh, gymnasium with the girl being hung, which I like. Yes, 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 I remember that. Uh, this boyfriend laying underneath her, getting covered in blood and all that sort of stuff. Yes. Yeah, there's a couple of good kills like that. But yeah, it it is very run-of-the-mill apart from that. So yeah, I right. get what you're saying. But for me, it just I'd rather watch this than the third one. Really? Yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd pick the third one over this one any day of the week. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Um, I like the ending as well, when the uh, two girls escaping on the uh, snowmobile, and then somebody puts the razor wire across the uh, path there. Yes, I was just going to say, didn't didn't they all die there? But yes, well, they did. Yes, but the, yeah, the two girls escape, and then uh, the razor wire conveniently cuts them both off at the neck, even though they're both sat at different heights on the snowmobile. Because <laughs> one thing you'll notice in all of these films, whenever somebody gets impaled, because it's obviously CGI, the one side of the uh, spear or blade never quite matches up with the other side if you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah which is great fun but um yeah it's an ending i think they nicked it from uh, the remake of 2001 maniacs to be honest but it works it works it's done okay yeah but um yeah it's a it's fine it is a mixed bag if someone said they didn't like it i would completely understand it and i don't love it but it is a bit of a mess, but I think it's better than the third one for me. It just feels better. I, you know what? I, I think you, you you nailed it on the third one when you made a reference to an 80s action flick. It partially feels like that. Yeah. Maybe that's why I, I liked watching that one better than this one. You could imagine if imagine that film was Con Air. <laughs> Con Air with hillbillies in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Instead of Nicolas Cage doing that stupid fucking voice. <laughs> He was so bad in that movie. <laughs> Give me the two to bear. And John Malkovich was so good. <laughs> yeah, I know. you got Malkovich, Danny Trejo, Ving Rhames, all these great... And you got fucking Nicolas Cage. Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> they should have put John Claude Van Damme in that movie. Let's yep. Would have been better. Would have been better. So what did you score wrong turn for? One. Really? Yep. Okay. I went three. Wow. Okay. This is a three for me. I, I do quite I've watched it three or four times. It's been on telly over here. This is the only one in the UK you can get on Blu-ray, by the way. Really? If anybody wants it. Yeah, for some reason, this one you can, but the others you can't. Um, it is available fairly cheaply. But, um, yeah, three for me. I don't mind it, despite its faults. I don't mind it. Okay, okay. So, uh, but yeah, switch your brain off and prepare not to be amazed. <laughs> and it has that going for it. Right. Are you ready for the next one? I am. Number five. Number five. Is Wrong Turn 5 Bloodlines. Let's play the trailer. Run, little girl. I'm coming to get you. If this shocks you. <laughs> if this offends you. <laughs> then you're in the wrong. <laughs> fucking. You're in my house now. Theater. <laughs> Face your fear. <laughs> and dare to own. The most gruesome wrong turn ever. <laughs> Turn five on Blu-ray. Right, wrong turn five. Bloodlines, 2012, directed once again by Declan O'Brien, starring Doug Bradley. Yes, someone we've heard of. Fucking hell. Yes, Camilla Arthurson, Simon Ginty, Roxanne McKee, Oliver Hoare, Kyle Redmond Jones, and Amy Lennox. In this one, a group of college students on a trip to the Mountain Man Festival on Halloween in West Virginia encounter a can of cannibals. You're laughing already. Why are you yes. laughing? Yes, it's about Man Festival. Yes. We've gone a little bit meta with this one, haven't we? Oh, God barkers with this one. <laughs> but it's got one of the most um, uh, prolonged uh, parading of uh, female nudity in all of the series. Which is obviously a good thing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No. Hang on, I'm just calling up. Is this the one with the um, two cyclists, or is that the next one? That's this one. It is this one. Yep. Yeah, so we've got the two cyclists going through the woods. They come to the hot springs. She strips her clothes off, as I think is only right. And then they That's right. on the way back, they both get slaughtered by yeah. Three Finger and his brothers. But, who well, are... uh, 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 be, be careful. The guy gets taken out. Yes. And Doug Bradley finds the girl, remember? And he tricks her into hiding and then whacks her with an axe or some shit. No, 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 no. Remember, yes. the girl yes. that he tricks and hides out is the TV reporter who's gone for a jog. Oh, shit. You're right. <laughs> yes, yes. No, you're right. You're right. I know. Yeah, uh, you're right. You are. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We're in this town in West Virginia. They're having the Mountain Man Festival. Where everybody walks around wearing masks that look like Three Finger. So he's obviously a real thing that they know about, despite the fact that later on in the film, no one knows who he is. You know, there's a part of this movie where he pulls off a Three Finger mask to show that he's Three Finger. Yeah. The mask he was wearing was better than his. <laughs> I was going to say the ones that the kids are buying in the shops are better than the one he's wearing. I know. But this introduces another member of the clan, so to speak, who is yes. played by Doug Bradley from Hellraiser. But he doesn't wear a mask in this. He is, quote unquote, the normal looking person who draws people in. He's the uh, Viggo Mortensen and Matthew McConaughey of this series. Yes. Yes. That's I expect he'd be pleased to be called that. Um, the difference is that they can do better American accents than Doug Bradley can. He did struggle with that. Yeah. <laughs> I love Doug Bradley. Obviously, Pinhead, Hellraiser, everything like that. Fantastic. He should have just used his normal accent, not gone for the American. Sorry, Doug. It, it, he should have. And let's be honest, even even he couldn't save it, yeah. but saved it, in my eyes, to about as high as it could get. Although it was – it, it kind of lost me a little bit when you get the introductory text, you know, Fairfield, West Virginia, wherever they're at, Fairchild or Puckleberry or whatever. <laughs> Has no people in it. Then they drive up and the town's full of people. It's Fair Lake, Greenbrier County, West Virginia. All right, fair enough. Obviously, during the day, the Mountain Man Festival is going on. The streets are full of people wearing three-finger masks. And then all of a sudden, they're gone. They're at this festival. No one says what the festival is, whether it's bands or whether it's a pig roast or whatever it is. Because <laughs> you, never, you never see anything else. Yeah, that's right. Everybody's quote-unquote at the festival, which means... <laughs> 
they haven't got to film anything because they're on the other side of town where we haven't got to see them. Yeah. In which case, Doug Bradley and the teenagers who have been arrested by the local sheriff are on a set that's made to look up like a small town, <laughs> which is clearly made of cardboard. And yeah, I'm going to point something out here. The sheriff, Sheriff Angela Carter, is played by an actress called Camilla Arfordson. She's okay. British. And this always makes me laugh because she is known, what's well, a known, in the UK, there's a, a series of adverts for a company called Secret Getaways, where you can, you know, f- go online. And if you want to book a hotel last minute cheaply, you can go on yes. there and yeah, yes, that yes, type yes. of thing. And she advertises them and she, you know, she sits on a, a chair by a pool and, you know, says, shh, Secret Getaways and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, and here she is playing the sheriff in Wrong Turn 5 for some reason. I don't know why. Well, I can't say this. Uh, she left her clothes on for the whole movie, and that was disappointing. Yes. She is a rather rather splendid-looking young lady. And yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And she's probably the best actor in this thing. Yes. I'm yes. going to say, and that includes Doug Bradley. Much as I like having Doug Bradley in there, he is fucking terrible. It, it's, uh, you know, it's the accent. Robert England was probably not available. Which would have improved it. It's, it's, uh, it, you know, it's the role. It's not a huge, huge role, but he does what he can with it, but it's just, you know, what can you do with that? That's it. Yeah. You got Doug Bradley and a load of kids in a local jail cell, and obviously the cannibals are coming to bust him out. He's obviously trying to trick the kids who were there to get the keys for him to let him out. And yeah, it's, it's a weird one, this one. It's probably more straightforward than part four. It is. It is. I do have to comment in this one. Uh, hillbillies are pretty smart. I mean, yeah. They know, they know just what parts of the, you know, the police station to take out. And yeah. <laughs> it goes a bit A team at the end when they're trying to bust him out. <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Oh. But again, I can't see that the jail cells being that strong because they do look like they were constructed the day before out of polystyrene and cardboard. <laughs> It looks like, you know, when you walk around Disneyland and you've got those sort of fake streets to look like a town out of a cartoon? Yes. That's what it looks like. Yes. All the meantime, this festival's going on, but it's not going on because there's nobody around, but they're all on the other side of town, so that's why no one's around. But you pan over there and the deputies there aren't doing anything. They just stood there. And it's, yeah. One of the, one of the deputies is uh, selling a pass to the uh, festival we don't ever see. Oh, yeah, he gets his willy wet for some reason. Yeah. Why is that scene in there, by the way? <laughs> filler, filler. There's no payoff for that. But, yeah. Oh, no, there's no payoff There is for him, that. but, oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, like part three, you get the feeling oh. that with a little bit more time and a little bit more money, this could have been a lot better. Yes, yes. Because they've got a story in place, but they're just, it's just not very well put together. You know. Doug Bradley clearly knows that he's cashing a paycheck and he's happy to do that. That's fair enough. That's right. I think Camilla Arfordson probably thinks she's doing something worthwhile to put on her CV. And she is very good. But ultimately, no one's going to remember her for this. Yeah, sadly. The rest of the kids are all fucking terrible and interchangeable. There's a couple of good effects in there. A couple. A couple. But yeah, to me, it's just, yeah, it doesn't quite go anywhere. But I I like it. uh... I like it better than the uh, uh, fourth one. I don't. I do. I know you don't. Yeah, I do. Okay. So what did you score this one? A two. Two? Yep. Okay. I went 2.5. Fair enough. Yeah. I like it better than the third one, but not as much as the fourth one. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Right. So we've got one more. Are you ready? Yeah. And if we don't agree on this, I'm going to be concerned about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's play a trailer. (laughs) Nick! Are you okay? Wrong turn six, last resort. 
2014, directed by Valerie Milev. We've got a new director. Yes. Starring Anthony Eilot, Chris Jarvis, Sadie Katz, Keela Zoll, Billy Ashworth, Roxanne Pallett, Kicker Robinson and Luke Cousins. An inheritance leads a young man and his friends to an abandoned resort inhabited by two sketchy caretakers and a clan of mutant cannibals. <laughs> of course it does. Yeah, of course it does. <laughs> it, it says abandoned, but it's not abandoned. Okay. First of all, I'm going to say this is the one with the two cyclists at the beginning, not the part five. Really? Yeah. I thought there was two. Okay, babe. Uh, all right. All right. I'm looking at Wikipedia page now. Yeah. Oh shit. So this is the one. Is this the one with the prolonged nudity then? Yeah. This is the one okay. with the prolonged nudity and the two cyclists. Okay. All right. Fair play. So, so I shall do something in the editing with that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I watched all these over the course of Friday and Saturday, and I still, you know. Yeah, I watched them all last week. <laughs> still getting confused. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one with the new the cyclists in the springs at the beginning. Yes. Okay. Uh, which we discussed. So, now we've got a plot. We've got a story. We've got a backstory with this one, sort of. Okay, sure. <laughs> I didn't say it was a good one. I just said we got one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we got a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start. We got a, a guy it's here. Not, it's not a, a. You have to define abandoned first. Yeah, it's abandoned, but it's got people living in it. <laughs> it's like an old people's home with two caretakers who are brother and sister, but they like shagging each other. Yes, got to get that West Virginia stereotype. That's it. That's it. And you've got the character. Is it Danny who? has inherited this building for some reason. Yes. This is a little bit Texas Chainsaw now, isn't it? He's inherited yeah. it. It's turned up with his friends. And he is a cousin of the two caretakers who run it. And they are trying to induct him into the rites of passage of their cannibal clan. Which, appara- apparently, that clan has gone from three people to well over 50. Suddenly, yet yeah, in one scene, we've got a Danny out in the woods with the two cousins and... The cast of Salem's Lot, I suppose, or whatever, out there with him. <laughs> and they're all sort of shagging each other and drinking weird drinks and inducting him into this cannibal clan. It's all gone a bit weird. Three fingers there with his brother. Um, they're oh. barely in this film. This feels to me like one of those films where a story was written and someone said, we could make this a wrong turn sequel. <laughs> That's exactly what it feels like yeah let's just put three finger in there it feels like it almost started out as a gothic ghost story yes and somebody said "Ooh, that gives me an idea yeah let's put some occult rituals in there they've got a chair that's used for shagging in this it's like a dentist chair but with stirrups on it <laughs> and roxanne pallet who british viewers will know from the soap oh. opera emmerdale lays back in it and gets a good scene too in a scene which I must admit, got rewound a few times and paused and rewound and paused and whatever. <laughs> oh, God, that whole thing at the end. I was just like, what the fuck is this chair? <laughs> I'll get, I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing more funny and disturbing than Roxanne Pallet, who's a beautiful young woman, shit actress, beautiful young woman, getting a good scene too. And the camera pans round and you've got three finger and his two brothers stood there in red cows. <laughs> Like it was the devil rides out. Like these fucking hillbillies, they can't even speak properly, and yet they're going to take part in some ritual with spells and candles and fertility rites. Oh, for fuck's sake. That said, I still enjoyed it. (laughs) At the end, uh, you know, after he makes his conversion to hillbilly. uh, (laughs) Is that an ordained religion? Yeah, he's, you know, he's... uh, you know, the, the three finger and his two brothers or whatever are there and says, we got important work to do. And they walk over to the closet and he hands them monk's robes. And I'm like, <laughs> the fuck? And yeah. then what's her name's in the wheelchair? And I'm like, what? Then they go down into this, this old fashioned operating theater with like seats and observations. And I'm, what in the hell is going on? Somebody obviously saw Texas Chainsaw 3D and. The idea of inheriting the house and the two family names coming together to make one pure race and all this shit going on. Because they got that in this film. They've got the Hillikers and the, another name. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. 
And he gets the whole backstory of we've moved on from Wrong Turn Two here, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> we've gone. We've it's gone. like saying character of Sally, who is the female caretaker played by Sadie Katz. I actually quite like Sadie Katz and a few other things. She's wasted in this. She gets burnt at the end of the film. Her face gets burnt. And you last see of her in this chair <laughs> with her legs in the air, getting a good scene too from Danny. And she's got this <laughs> Freddy Krueger style makeup on her face. I know. <laughs> oh dear. And it's oh. just, oh, you couldn't, could you? Well, I probably could. But yeah, it's, uh, oh, I don't know. It's all shades of wrong, this film. But that <laughs> said, I still enjoy it. <laughs> but that, that whole ending shagging sequences. What yeah. the? It, again, it's like somebody got the script for a, a gothic horror movie, and they had this weird part at the end with some kind of thing. And yeah, oh, let's let's keep that in. We can fit that in there somewhere. Yeah, and yeah, three finger and sawtooth and one eye. I think they're all called. They're barely in this film. They are literally except back. At the, except at the end of those <laughs> in the monk's burlap cowls or whatever. Yeah, these are people who wear dungarees that are like 30 years old and ripped and torn and got <laughs> shit marks all over them, whatever. But they've got some nice ironed red robes that they put on <laughs> for this fertility, right? Oh, God. Oh, dear. Uh, the mask, their masks look terrible. They look like just plastic lumps they've bought down at the thrift store. And it's, yeah, it's a weird one, this one. They're obviously trying to blow this up into making more films of, with a bigger <laughs> plot line. And why? Just keep it simple. It's hillbillies killing people. Oh, God. But, like I've said, I still find this entertaining as fuck. <laughs> it is just... It's stupid. It's dumb. But I prefer it to part three. <laughs> and part five. I told you to leave. You had your chance. <laughs> <laughs> God almighty. Yeah. The acting's bad. The characters oh. are bad. The sex is great. <laughs> oh dear lord help me and that's about all there is for this so what did you score it I scored it a point five. really you hated it more than part four you want to hate me <laughs> I, I actually I actually have to change that to a one okay. because because it's made you laugh so much it's made me laugh so damn hard <laughs> it makes me laugh fertility rights <laughs> cannibals of clans of 50 and <laughs> what the hell Oh, God. Do you want to know what I scored it? No. What'd you score it? Take a guess. Uh, three. Bang on. <laughs> I'll happily watch this. I know it's shit. <laughs> I know it. But it's brilliantly shit. God. And it doesn't... Because oh. I know how dumb it is going into it, it doesn't disappoint me. Part three always disappoints me, because I always want it to be better than what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. But this, I, just, I know it's terrible. I know that they're trying to do with it and they're trying to expand the mythology. They're pillbillies. You don't need a mythology. They are what they are. But the fact that it's just got so much nudity, so much <laughs> violence and stupidity, it's like they've watched, gone back to part two and gone, yeah, let's try and recreate that again. But they've gone about it completely the wrong way. And whereas part two was brilliantly over the top, this is just dumb over the top. But yeah. I still like, I still like it. Still makes me laugh. That's hilarious. Yeah, so it's getting a three from me. Oh, dear. So that's the whole Wrong Turn series, then, we quickly rush through. Yes. I, I don't know if there's much more to say about it. I don't think so. It is, as I say, it is what it is. They obviously, with the last three films, they're trying to <laughs> build something that clearly isn't there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I guess we better rank them, really, in our preferred order, aren't we? Yes. So what's your favourite? Well, you know, we both know our favorite is number two. Wrong turn two, yes. After that? Number two. I mean, number one. Yep, yeah, same with me. What's your third favorite? Um, Number three. Really? Yep. Okay. Uh, see, I had a bit of a battle here. I can see that. <laughs> I had a real battle. I'm going to say part six. <laughs> purely Are you because sure? I was going to go number four. <laughs> <laughs> and but number even talking about number six has made me laugh so much more than number four did so oh. I'm gonna go with number six <laughs> just because it's so stupid and those kids are the worst that group of kids at the beginning they're worse than any of them oh yeah 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 oh god 
Yeah, but I think, yeah, I like this purely because it feels different from the past three films as well, because, I mean, I don't know anything about Declan O'Brien, but, yeah, it just, I'm glad it was made by somebody else. So, yeah, number six is my third favourite. So, fourth? Um, Let's see, i got to look here. Uh, Number five. All right, I'm going number four. Fifth is number four. My fifth favourite, number five. And last fee is wrong turn three for me. What's your least favourite? Uh, number six. Number six. Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad you liked one and two so much. They were the two that I really wanted you to get on board with. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe after I hang up, I'll have to rethink it. But I, I, you know, it's funnier talking about the fertility ritual than watching it. Yeah. As soon as you start talking about it, you realize what nonsense it is. <laughs> <laughs> with the robes. I mean, the- I know. <laughs> what the? Uh, I mean, at least they could have brought all fifty of them in there. I know, but it's what's what's with the just the three? And they're taking it so seriously as well. I think that's the other thing. The tone of Wrong Turn Two is everybody knows this is stupid, so let's just go with it and have fun. Whereas yes. number six is so po faced. That's what makes it even funnier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say it's a good film. I just think on on a purely entertainment level, I do enjoy it, but. I think recommendations are definitely one and two, and then you yes. take, your chan- take your chances after that. Yes, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think we can both agree on varying levels that they each have their aspect that's good. Yeah, I think the series as a whole, I think that is to its credit that it isn't just the same film remade and remade over. Yes, at yes. least there is an attempt to try and vary each one out and give each film an identity. So there is that. There is that. Whether there, it works or not, that. whether it works or not, isn't is is debatable but it's there <laughs> that's right <laughs> so we've got some feedback we do we do do you want to go first or shall i uh i will let me uh, place my glasses on here oh dear take a sip of water yeah ah it's too early in the morning for drinking ah, it's the afternoon here yeah i'm not a i'm not a true scott i can't drink this early in the morning we well, are not a true scott anyway yeah uh, that's true <laughs> at, at some point with our political climate I'd like to be a true something else yeah that's true that's true the first one is from Amanda oh Amanda 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 Reyes hey guys long time no right I am not sure how I fell so far behind but I wanted to say I love listening to your human centipede episode <laughs> <laughs> oh Gore Blimey was such an added pleasure to my listening experience. Please bring him back soon. We shall. We shall. He shall return. I, I enjoyed having Gore Blimey a lot. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Oops. The views on this podcast are Myron's and Myron's alone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, God. I've only seen one Wrong Turn movie, so this will be short. I can't believe I've only seen the first film because I really enjoyed it. My love of backwoods slashers knows no bounds. Ooh, just like you, Chris. Yeah. With with Madman being one of my favorites. Yep. That's good. Is that uh, Joe Spinell and Madman? No, that's Maniac you're thinking of. Maniac. Yes. Oh, I love Maniac. Yes. yes. I think Wrong Turn is an excellent straight-faced return to the 80s glory with good special effects and most likable cast. I remember feeling bad when Jeremy Sisto dies. Well, I, I, I can't go wrong with you there. We all did. We all felt bad. Because the best actor in the movie was, you know, gone. Um, also, it would seem Wrong Turn was paying a big and small homage to those films of the glorious days of yore. The best example that I can think of is the shot the filmmakers lifted from The Prey. I wrote about this shot over at Retro Slashers. I know you can't share this on your podcast, but for your reference, here's a link. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes. There you go. There you go. See, we can share it, Amanda. We can. The reason why it sticks out to me is that it's an odd shot. Therefore, I claim it is intentional, and I'm never wrong. Or, right, I mean usually. Mm-hmm. Amanda, you're never wrong. Anyway, I feel like the filmmakers were really paying attention to what made those 80s classics, or no-so classics, depending on your mileage work. Uh, I also got to tell Stan Winston that I loved Wrong Turn when I saw him. Is there anyone she hasn't spoken to? Or has a crush on? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I love a band. Well, apparently, I think she used to like working a blockbuster in Hollywood. Well, that's a good place to 
Let's so I, I think there's a lot of reasons why she's met a lot of people, but you know, I also got to tell Stan Winston that I loved Wrong Turn when I saw him at a signing at Comic Con a couple of years before he passed away. Okay, well, fair play to that. Mm-hmm. I actually shouted it over the crowd, and he smiled and didn't act put out at all, which was nice. I like that too. So we've gone from telling Stan Winston to just shouting at him across a crowded room. That's right. <laughs> Maybe he was just acknowledging someone was shouting at him. I don't want to piss on your chips or nothing, but <laughs> it's a nice story. Oh, <laughs> uh, I once did that with uh, the uh, guy who played the colonel and the lady who played the vice president on the new Battlestar Galactica. I saw them at a con and they were walking, and I well, the original Battlestar Galactica. No, no, the new one. All oh, right, okay. I don't know. I've never seen it. Really? Yeah. I've got no interest. Do, do you like the original? Yeah. Give this one a try. I think you might like it. I, don't know. I ain't got time for TV. You can binge it. Anyways. Anyway. Uh, anyway, on with uh, Amanda here. Finally, one of the hillbillies is played by Ted Clark, <laughs> who was who was in a pretty decent late-entry slasher from the 90s called Happy Hell Night. He played Bara. I think this is awesome. So, I think Ted Clark played uh wasn't three finger the other one eye i think was that it okay so those are my random thoughts hope you are both well i will try to leave more useless feedback in the future amanda amanda i love your feedback you always yeah. got good you always got great stories i don't care what anybody says i love your stories absolutely absolutely they're always great and i was going to pick her up on something yeah i like that line about the filmmakers playing attention to what made the 80s Slash is so great. I think they were, and I think especially the first two films, they really are a labour of love. Yes. For the whole slasher thing. Brilliant. Thanks, Amanda. Well, I've got some feedback here from our good friend Blue. Oh, nice. Ah. So let's go. It's quite a long one, this one. Hang on. Hi, guys. Blue here with a bit of feedback for your next episode. I quite like inbred hillbilly cannibals in a sad and baffled sort of way. Well, you are from Lancashire. So when you said you were undertaking the Wrong Turn franchise, I got a little bit excited and in a very good way. Now, I've only watched four of the films simply because that's all I own. So Wrong Turn 1. I really like this film. The acting isn't bad. The script is quite good. And there's a bit of eye candy for everyone. Yep. The scenery is amazing. I want to live there. Uh, It is mostly CGI blue. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah. And I believe it's in Canada. But (laughs) I can I can attest, though, Blue, that West Virginia is extremely picturesque, lovely country. Mm. Yeah, those aerial shots at the beginning of the films are, are quite nice. Yeah. There's no jobs there, mind you, but it's great country. Well, yeah. Said that for everywhere, really, can't we? Right. Yeah, I want yeah. to live there, minus the raging cannibals, of course, but I would really love the car stereo that plays the song from the same place, the exact same mind, where it stopped after the CD gets ejected and a nice bit of eye candy replaces it back in the slot. Oh, that's Desmond Carrington. It's playing Queens of the Stone Age in his car, in his Mustang. My slot, however, likes to go back to the beginning and start again, but I digress. You filthy... Oh, just to lower the tone. I really like the kills, too. The poor lass who gets her head severed at the mouth in the trees raised quite a mighty cheer from me, which I swiftly turned into a cough and then a splutter as I reminded myself it's not really the done thing to cheer someone demise. Oh, I think these films warrant that. Yeah. The hillbillies look remarkably inbred. I'm sure I spied a relative or two. Jeff Goldblum got on my nerves. I think she means Jeremy Sisto, but he does look a bit like Jeff Goldblum in this, yeah. Yes, yes, he does. Jeff Goldblum got on my nerves, though. Well, Jeff wouldn't have done if it actually being him, rather than some guy trying to be him. Oh, <laughs> and no, I really didn't cover my cheer when he copped it. All in all, a good film, and it gets three and a half partly chewed fingers out of five. Yeah, we haven't done that for a while, actually. Yeah, partly chewed fingers, we'll use that one. Oh, she doesn't like Jeremy Sisto, Myron. What are you going to do? That's all right. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong turn two. I was a bit annoyed by the characters at first, but then grew to like them as you found out their stories. It made me feel a bit more sympathetic towards them and really felt quite sick when they were eating the girl from the spit roast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do vomit in films very well, and after the found footage shots, I was feeling a bit green around the gills. This feeling increased tenfold when the young hillbilly is caught cranking one out over the girl in the bikini, because I couldn't <laughs> help thinking if his willy was deformed too. More than likely. I forgot about that. Yeah. By the time it got to the hill... Then, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that's a worthy scene because moments later, after his girlfriend or sister or wife or all of the above... All of the them, above, yeah. They they take the scalp off the black-haired girl, right? Yeah. And then... 
then there's that scene on the stump where he has decided to see to his girlfriend or sister or wife, and she's wearing the <laughs> she's wearing the scalp, and it falls off. <laughs> well, we're just getting to that. By the time we got to the hillbilly sex scene, I was completely grossed out and screaming, get the fuck off my telly. I squirmed in my seat until it was over. It became a completely bonkers gore fest with exploding hillbillies and one of them flying backwards around 50 feet after getting shot. I was howling at that. I bloody love this film, guys. Probably more than I should, but just slightly less than would get me committed. Has to be four partly chewed fingers out of five. Yeah, good on you. I told you. I forgot about that scene. Yeah. Wrong two and three. Oh, God, help. Guys, guys, there's boobies, big bouncing boobies. Oh, that's got to hurt. I have been stabbed, quite an exaggeration. It was more prodded in the boobie by a snap bra wire. No, I'm not going to tell you what I was up to. I, well, it's best left in the imagination. That's and right. And let me tell you, it hurts. But in a way, I was quite pleased the buxom one met with Cupid's arrow like that rather than a less mammary challenge girl. What? What I said is not politically correct. Believe me, it's a damn challenge just standing up when you have big boobies. Don't I know? <laughs> anyway, back to the film. The acting was terrible. The CGI cheese wire kill was awful. Don't yeah, worry, the... Chris and I will be around to help prop you up. Yes, of course we will. The hillbillies look like goblins from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and the fighting oh. on the truck scene looked like something that was filmed in the 1930s. Yeah, imagine that piano music over the back of it. Yeah. All in all, it was okay, but it was only the oh. bloody gore and the odd bald head that made me give this two and a half partly chewed fingers out of five. And on to wrong turn four. I loved the first scenes in the asylum, although the doctor was a bit dramatic, wasn't he? I loved the patients going berserk. It was like attending a family party. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the hillbillies looking more like hillbillies and less like goblins. Yeah. We also have the sex scenes. I did wonder why they were put in, pardon the pun. I think it was to make you forget the really shitty acting, the really <laughs> shitty writing, and that, oh, we just happened to stumble on the asylum aspect of the plot. Yeah, there is that shot when she says, look, there's something on the horizon, and about 50 feet in front of them, there's this huge fucking asylum. <laughs> yeah. The filmmakers forgot to film the scene where they actually take a wrong turn, and the girl delivering the line saying they had taken the wrong turn overacted it so much it was cringeworthy. Yeah. The kills were okay and gory enough, but the rest mm. just bored me, so I'm only giving it two partially chewed fingers out of five. Right, I've rambled on long enough, then there's a bit of praise. Best wishes, Blue. Thanks, Blue. Yeah, I'm glad you like Wrong Turn 2. I knew you'd love it. <laughs> oh, God. I forgot about that scene at Wrong Turn. That was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I've, I've gone around the band. Oh, and then that's uh, Wrong Turn done and dusted. That's right. Brilliant. So uh, what are we doing next? I know what we're doing next. Are you going to share it on air or are we going to tell me off air? Um, well, if I announce it on air now and you're not prepared for it, are you going to go, what? Yeah, let's do it off air. Let's do it off air. Yeah. It's going to be a three-parter, though, I'll tell you that. Is it three we can cover in one, or will we have to go to two? It's going to be three weeks covering four films in each. Oh, there's only, there's what? There's only one series that goes that long. There is. Is it the big one? It's the big one. Nice. And I said we'd do it by the end of the year. Okay. I get Ooh. behind this one. Let's leave it at that then. Ooh, ooh, what could it be? <laughs> That's right. What could it be? <laughs> it's a real mystery, folks. It's a it's a head scratcher. No, it is. It is. But anyway, until then, if you've got any feedback or you want to complain or you want to just generally shout at us, ask us anything, do whatever you like, you can do that at ancientslumberpodcast at gmail dot com. Or you can get us on Twitter at ancient underscore slumber. Please do go to iTunes or whatever the fuck it's called now and give us a review. Good, bad or indifferent. We don't care. Just get us a review. And that is it until next time. That's right. Brilliant. Well, on that note, I think we should say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. It's all you got, bitch.